The second annual running of the Kyle Larson Late Model Challenge presented by Flow Racing is about to go green here at Volunteer Speedway with Jonathan Davenport and Kyle Larson bringing them to the green. Jonathan Davenport punches the button first and he'll take them off into one and two. Larson in second, Hudson O'Neill down in third. Now here comes Marler to his outside, Mike Marler up to third. Mike Marler in that third spot trying to hold off Hudson O'Neill. Larson gonna go way high down in turns three and four. Jonathan Davenport leads lap one, Larson second, Mike Marler third. Marler sits back in third. Now he sets his sights on Larson. Davenport setting cell out front in this one. Davenport already five wins on the year. Three of those came out at Votto Speedway Park to start the year. And right now he leads the way and he's got Kyle Larson in pursuit. Marler third, Hudson O'Neill in fourth. And I tell you what, Michael Brown has had a good run so far tonight. He sits back in fifth. Yeah, the 24 deep car looks really good. Again, there's two different lines being run by your second and third place cars right now. As Jonathan Davenport stays out front, Larson. Larson's maybe a little bit better than JD. Down in turns one and two, down in turns three and four. Larson going to go around the high side. Davenport on the bottom. So they come across the line this time. Four laps in the books. And it's a six tenths of a second advantage for the driver of the number 49, Jonathan Davenport. Larson second. Marler third. Hudson O'Neill fourth. Michael Brown right now rounds out the top five cars. Again, different lines being run by the top two down in turns three and four. Working early in this one. And now Larson closing back in just a little bit on Davenport. Those two have broke away from the pack. Hudson O'Neill back in fourth trying to get to Marler in third. They're side by side. And you got battles back in the pack as we go split screen action as they work all four. And Dell McDowell and the 17M, he moves around the 24 car. Yeah, Dale McDowell right now in the 17 in. Back in fifth. This way. Yep, yep, up into the fifth spot, taking that spot away from the 24 D of Michael Brown. Jensen Ford right there as well. And here we are. Look at this traffic. Yeah, DJ. seven laps into the race, just as we said. And your race leaders have caught the tail end of the field. Jonathan Davenport and Kyle Larson. Larson's got to run down the front stretch. And Larson's going to throw a slider off into one and two up in front of Davenport. Davenport turns back down the hill. The field, the crowd comes to their feet off into three and four. Who's going to lead this time out of four, DJ? They go side by side through turns three and new four leader. It's a lap traffic. You do have a new leader. Kyle Larson going to put the Rudley six out front. And man, he's got some decisions to make now, Ben. Oh, man. Ricky Ford oh. Jr. going to call it a night as he ducks down to the bottom. Meanwhile, Davenport dicing through lap traffic. We got 10 down, 40 to go. And let's let it stay green as they work off into one and two with Kyle Larson leading the way now over car number 49 of Jonathan Davenport. Sam Seawright also out of the party in the 16. Jonathan Davenport, though, as you might imagine, not going to let Kyle Larson just drive away from the field. Larson going to go to the outside to Chase Briscoe, put him a lap down, but now he's got the 55 of Benji Hicks running up high in the same line. Davenport in second. Hudson O'Neill's moved into third. Back and forth now, Dell McDowell. Marler has slid back to fifth, and McDowell is on the move. We'll keep an eye on that driver. As right now, there's action all over the speedway. Now you got a battle for the lead off of two down the back straightaway as Davenport ducks down to the inside off of turn number four. Larson's going to hold serve, and they are in heavy lap traffic. Yeah, Larson just trying to find a way around that 55 of Benji Hicks. He's not able to dive down to the bottom because there's lap traffic down there as well. Eli beats down there in the 109. Davenport right now again trying to play that high-speed game of chess and find his move when he might go to work back by the <laughs> six. Just we say that, Larson throws a slider on the 55 of Benji Hicks down in one and two. He clears him momentarily. Hicks, though, tries to drive back down to the inside. Right Right side of your screen, Hudson O'Neill sits in third. Dell McDowell trying to get to him. Michael Brown right there as well. Huddy sits in the third spot. Out front, though, it's Larson. He's got a little bit of breathing room as he works down the back straightaway. We work lap number 16 of this 50-lap affair. A little bit of breathing room you mentioned, Ben, is a whole seven-tenths of a second this time as Kyle Larson has, <laughs> quote, unquote, the biggest advantage. He's Ooh, he bobbles. Yeah, he does. He bobbles. Maybe jump the cushion just a little bit down in turns one and two. That allows Davenport to get another run in three and four. Davenport right there. Meanwhile, Hudson O'Neill trying to reel him in. He sits back in the third spot as it has been a good one so far as Larson gets a good run off of two, but Millwood slides up in front of him. Larson briefly gets off the throttle, and you got to think Davenport's waiting on one little mistake out of Kyle Larson. He absolutely is. Jonathan Davenport's no dummy, and there's a reason he won $2 million <laughs> last year as Larson bounces off the wall, going into turn number one, trying to work by the 31 of Millwood. Again, Davenport, he's back there. He's ready to pounce, man. 
like you said, he's just he's waiting for Larson to make a mistake. And we know Kyle Larson, there's no slowing down. It doesn't matter how big of a lead or how small of a lead he has. He's going to throw caution to the wind when he's in the six. Well, he's going to go warp speed right now. It's a two-car breakaway as Davenport looks at the inside of Larson off of turn number four. 20 in the books, 30 to go. And Kyle Larson's going to throw a slider on Dalton Wilson to put him down a lap. Wilson turns back down the hill. Back in the second spot, it's still Davenport. Third, Hudson O'Neill. Fourth, McDowell. Fifth is Marler. I'll tell you what, I, I hope this is coming across as well to the fans at home as it is to the folks here. This has been one phenomenal late model feature in the early stages of this one. 21 lap scores. We look back now on the battle for third and fourth. Dale McDowell quietly picking his way up into position number four, as we mentioned, setting his sights on Hudson O'Neill. Those drivers now battling through lap traffic as well. Yeah, Huddy back there in heavy lap traffic with Millwood. McDowell right there behind him. You see that on the right side of your screen. Your leader, Larson, on the left side, closing in on halfway this time by. They will complete lap number 23. 23 down, 27 to go. And Larson and Davenport chasing each other through the cushion, or should I say Davenport's chasing Larson. And now Larson closing in on more lap traffic. Here comes Jonathan Davenport. He has a the lap traffic he's closing in on as well is your 15th and 16th place cars. It's Tyler Erb in the best performance, number one in 15th. And Ross Bales in the Hick 79 running in 16th position. Behind them on the right-hand side of your screen at the halfway point, Ben Dale McDowell down to the inside of Hudson O'Neill in a battle for third. Good battle back there. Meanwhile, look at the lap traffic in front of your leaders on the left side of your screen. Now it's going to be Larson down low. Davenport up top. Can Davenport capitalize? They come off before we have a new leader. Yes, sir, you will. Jonathan Davenport back to the lead. Oh, oh, this is fun. Oh, man, this has been a great race so far. This lap traffic is bonkers just in front of your race leader. Davenport able to move back out front. 24 laps to go. Larson going to try to drive back down to the inside. Man, oh, man, where is he going to go? There's nowhere for the sixth car to go. Here comes Davenport to the outside. And Davenport now going to go around Tyler Herb down the back straight and put him down a lap. Larson now will go to the top side. That's where we saw Davenport get back to the lead. Davenport, your leader, about three car lengths as we complete now with just 23 laps to go. In the lap before that, Ben, just off the screen, the 17M of Dale McDowell was able to work by Hudson O'Neill and grab that third spot. O'Neill's back to fourth. Mike Marler right now rounding out the top five. Jimmy Owens off the pace in the Kohler Motorsports number 20. He's yielded down to the very inside of the racetrack right there to the inside of your leader, Dick, uh, J.D. And Owens going to call it a night. We'll stay clean and green. We come around to complete lap number 30. 30 on the board, 20 to go. Larson trying to get back to Davenport as they go around Forrest Trent. Meanwhile, back in the third spot, Dale McDowell slow and steady working the low side of the racetrack. Can he get there? Imagine that. Dale McDowell slow <laughs> and steady on the inside of the racetrack. Never would have guessed. Mr. Consistency of the 17M. He is indeed one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, quietly closing in on your race leaders. Sands running out of the hourglass. Those were now inside of 20 laps to go. Davenport, Larson, McDowell, Marler now up to fourth. O'Neill rounds out the top five. Chris Madden rides back. Back in six, slider for the lead through turns one and two. Davenport turns back down the hill. You got the battle for the lead on the left side. You got the battle for foot fifth on back on the right. Davenport and Larson going at it. Another slider into one and two. I bet there's going to be. Pay me, DJ. There it is. Oh, Dad Larson up in front of Davenport. Davenport back down the hill. Oh to three and four as we work to come around and come race to 16 to go and Larson catches concrete Davenport back to the lead. Spoiler is flapping in the wind. The race <laughs> on the spoiler for the six. Another slider. We got a banger at Bulls Gap. Maybe Davenport drives back down under him. They're throwing haymakers at each other this oh. time by 15 to go. Oh, this is good oh. stuff. And don't look now. Dell McDowell's reeling them both in. They're going to go slider fest. McDowell might get them on the bottom. Inside of 15 to go down the back straightaway. This is fun, man. McDowell and Mark Marler's there as well. Marler closing in on both of them, too. It's going to be fun uh -oh. because McDowell's uh -oh, DJ. a completely different line. Uh-oh, slider, slider. Yep. Oh, and Larson's <laughs> going to take it away from Davenport out of two. The place is going nuts oh, as they head off into three and four. Holy cow. I, McDowell's going to win this thing, man. Here comes Tim McDowell. McDowell. the bottom. McDowell's about to work by the 49 of Jonathan Davenport. They go side by side for second off into turns one and two. 13 laps to go. Flow racing. Are you entertained on a Thursday night? Uh, thank you, Vic and Chris the Hill. This is fantastic. Maybe the best race at Bulls Gap in over a decade is right now. Larson just pounding the cushion, and he's driving away from him, DJ. Kyle Larson wow. has found a group that he's liking. He's gotten comfortable in the Rumley number six, and he is now stretched out to about a half straightaway or three-fourths of a straightaway advantage over Jonathan Davenport. Just as we say,
say that though. This time by 10 laps to go, and once again, heavy lap traffic directly in front of your race leader. Well, I think the key was he knocked part of a spoiler off, and that got him a lot faster. On the right side of your screen, oh. Davenport inside. Larson throws caution to the win every lap. <laughs> Meanwhile, care. on the right side of your screen, McDowell goes to work on Jonathan Davenport for position at number two there as they work to the lap traffic at Tanner English. And I tell you what, McDowell has had a good race car here tonight. Yes, he has. The veteran Dale McDowell down to the inside. He knows that he's got less than 10 laps left. He's got to work by Davenport. And this is an opportunity to catch Larson as we say that. Larson, as you see on the left hand side of your screen, making quick work of lap traffic. If he clears the 99 <laughs> of Martha, and he does, he's got mostly a clear track in front of him. Meanwhile, McDowell up to second, Davenport back to third, Marler sits in the fourth spot, and now up to fifth is Chris Madden, Hudson O'Neill sixth, and it's Weiss, Ford, Brown, Overton at your top ten with just seven laps remaining. This has been a fun one, DJ. Kyle, it sure has, man. Kyle Larson is now stretched out to almost a full straightaway lead. Is again, it gets a little <laughs> too high down in turn two, a three and four. Man, it doesn't matter if he's out front and he slips up. He's again. an animal. He he's is an giving animal. fans their money's worth Kevin Rumley's having a heart attack. He's like, man, you got a straightaway lead. That's Stop right. it, Kyle. Five laps to go. Five laps to go. And Kyle Larson leads the way here tonight at Bulls Gap, trying to get his second late model win of the year as he has got a full straightaway advantage over Dell McDowell, who rides in second. Back in third, the 49 car of Jonathan Davenport. Fourth, Marler. Chris Madden in fifth. And the laps are ticking away. And the guy out front by 3.1 seconds, Kyle Larson right now. As Larson has just punished the top side of this racetrack. He got the lead. He lost the lead. He got it back. And now he's just three laps away from a $20,000 payday here tonight. Dell McDowell, a great run in second. Meanwhile, back in third, it's Davenport trying to keep Marler behind him for that final podium spot. Kyle Larson, though, the man on the mission, off into turns one and two. Just two laps to go. He'll close in on lap traffic down the back straightaway. He doesn't have to push, push the issue too hard, though. Is that a turn number four? The white flag is out. White flag in the air. One more time around the speedway here tonight for Kyle Larson, the Elk Grove, California driver down the back straightaway. He's come to Tennessee. He's brought the Rumley number six. And tonight, going to victory lane, $20,000 richer. It's Kyle Larson in car number six. I think he's got a flat tire at the line. It doesn't matter. He gets the win. McDowell in second. Davenport comes home third. Marler fourth. Chris Madden in fifth. Then it's Hudson O'Neill, Ricky Weiss, Ford, Brown, and Overton. Your top ten. And a flat that left rear tire on Kyle Larson's car. How about that one? Race fans finishing third here tonight out of Blairsville, Georgia. Jonathan Davenport second out of Chickamauga, Georgia. It's Dell McDowell. And how about it for your winner out of Elk Grove, California? It's Kyle Larson picking up the win. <laughs> As he climbs out of the car, let him hear you. Kyle Larson gets the win. <laughs> Holy cow. You talk about race car drivers, and we talk about guys that throw caution to the wind. You getting congratulations from Jonathan Davenport, man. It goes without saying, but tell everyone just how bad you wanted to win that race. Uh, I think with Jonathan out in front of me, it makes you want to win even more because he's, he's just so damn good. So um, what a hell of a race there. Every freaking late model race I've been in this year is, is wild and fun. So uh, what awesome track. Thanks to Vic Hill and everybody a part of this event. Thank you fans for coming out. This is a amazing turnout of people in the grandstands in the infield and in the pits it's uh it's wild and i'm glad we could put on a, a good race for the fans there 50 now 50 non-stop laps so um just a, a lot of fun i knew the top was gonna be good all all night it was just you know, it just was gonna take somebody to go up there to clean it off and um told myself for the feature i was just gonna commit to it and um try and try and catch jonathan before his stick guys told tell him to move up so i uh, was able to do that and then you know, i seen his nose i was I was worried if the middle was cleaning off in three and four, and then I seen his nose, and uh, I made a mistake and went to the bottom to try and get by or get by a lapper, and I'd been stuck behind him for 10 or 12 laps, and uh, he ripped by me and had to get up on the wheel. Thankfully, you know my pace was still good, and, and he was 
you know, not running against the cushion quite you know, that much in three and four and until I started throwing some more sliders at him and um, he just kept getting tied up there and I could get good runs. So I'm um, just glad that uh, I cleared him and, and glad that uh, there was no cautions that came out because I didn't know what to do if we were to get a restart. Talk about the last lap as well. You get a flat tire on this race car. Pucker factor went up maybe a little bit on that last lap, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I seen, uh, I think, you know, Kyle Busch, uh, he, I think he could tell I was coming because the flag man showed us two to go and whatnot. So he started on the bottom, and uh, I thought uh, I could get clear of him, you know, off at two, and before he came up to the top of the straightaway and just got into him, and, or his right front got in my left rear, and it kind of bunny hopped me up, and, and I could tell something was broke or the left rear was flat, and wasn't sure um, how close those guys were behind me because I felt like I, the last five laps or so I kind of botched a little bit. So um, just thankful that uh, there was no caution or anything like that. So uh, thanks to, to Kevin Rumley, Flow Racing. Uh, it's a brand new car. You know, we tested a couple times with it. And uh, to get a win, you're know, the first night out on it feels pretty, pretty cool. So thanks to Flow Racing, you know, Kevin, Kevin King, uh, James, Mike, uh, Jacqueline, Dave, everybody, you know, it's is, um, I don't get to race a ton right now, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So get these next handful of weeks we get racing. So excited to get in the, the 57s, you know, next week too. So make sure all the fans tune in some good, good sprint car racing on Tuesday night. Last thing, you talked about the massive crowd here in the grandstands and the folks watching at home on flow. What do you want to say to this huge crowd that came out here to see you race tonight? I uh, just thank you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks to everybody watching on flow too. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, there's thousands and thousands of people watching on there. So um, cool to cool to put this flow racing car in, in the flow racing victory lane, I guess. And um, this, this, I mean, it was huge last year, this event, and I feel like it's, you know, a quarter bigger. It was already big last year, so it couldn't get much bigger, but uh, there, there seems to be more people here. So hopefully we can continue to grow this event. You know, thanks to Kyle Busch and Chase Briscoe, too, for coming out and, you know, um, trying to, trying to, figure these things out. These are the hardest cars I've ever driven, and uh, for them to just show up one night, it's, uh, it's tough, but they did a good job. Kyle got better every time he hit the track. Chase did a really good job, too, so um, look forward to hopefully getting some more uh, cup guys out to, to try these late models, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys bug Flow Racing and Tony Stewart enough we can get the prelude to dream back at Eldora. How about another round of applause for Kyle Larson?